Troy, get out of that pile of vampire blood. Your mother's gonna kill me. Your new sneakers are ruined. Oh, hey. How you doing? Yeah, my son and I are hunting some vampires. Can you believe they set up a bordello in our small, fair town? Pisses me off, but we're taking care of them. Holy water and these squirt guns seems to work pretty well. I don't know if it's gonna work against the master, but we're gonna find out shortly, because she's upstairs. We're gonna go get her right now. While we do that, check out this review for Tales from the Crypts, Bordello of Blood. Hey, welcome back to my channel. And the film we are going to discuss today is Tales from the Crypt, Bordello of Blood. This film came out in August of 1996, about a year after Tales from the Crypt, Demon Night. This film's rated R. It's only an hour and 27 minutes long. Um, it had a budget of two and a half million dollars, and upon release, it made only 5.7. This was supposed to be, this was meant to be the second installment of a trilogy of Tales from the Crypt films. Eventually, they did make a third film called Ritual. I've never seen it. I actually wouldn't mind checking it out. But that's kind of like the unofficial cap to this trilogy, which is a shame. Um, this movie gets a lot of, it wasn't very well received upon release. I think it only has a hold of 12% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is unfortunate. We're going to get into that a little bit. This movie was directed by Gilbert Adler. Um, he came in to direct it, um, and the story is actually by Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis. They wrote a script, this script back in the 70s, and they never could get it produced, and it was meant to be like a cheesy B-type vampire film, which actually kind of what it ended up becoming. Now, the star in this film, Joel Silver produced this film, and it was his idea to hand, hire Angie Everhart as Lilith. He had just done um, Fair Game with Cindy Crawford, and he thought supermodel actresses was the wave of the future. So he talked the producers into bringing in Angie Everhart to play Lilith. At the time, she was going with Sylvester Stallone. And he even suggested her to um, Joel Silver, because they had just uh, worked on a film together uh, right around this time. Um, and so Angie Everhart plays Lilith. We have Dennis Miller as Rafe Gutman. He is our private eye detective in this town. We have Erica Alaniac as Catherine. She, wor she works for this uh, reverend at this kind of mega church, and that reverend is played by the great Chris Sarandon, who's fantastic in this film as the kind of cheeseball reverend. And we have Car Corey Feldman in here as Caleb. Now, coming off of Demon Knight, which I think is excellent, I'm going to watch that tonight, and I'm going to have a review for that out later this week. I'm going to do these back-to-back. -back. Um, Demon Knight, I think, is a fantastic horror film. And back then, I loved Demon Knight. And seeing this, I was disappointed back then. It's grown on me over the years, but let's get into it a little bit. Basically, the story is very simple. We, we get our introduction to the film is this group of men are going to the South American jungle looking for this tomb. When they get there, the, the guys that are helping this, this um, little person find this tomb think they're going for buried treasure. When they get there, it's a crypt. And he explains to them, this is the most powerful vampire that's ever walked the face of the earth, and he's going to resurrect her. He, he pulls out this box with four pieces of her heart, puts them back together, and shoves them in her chest. Well, pretty soon she gets resurrected and kills all the helpers off. And he controls her with the key from Demon Knight. That's what keeps her under control. Then we cut to the Crypt Keeper. And we have our opening like you would normally have at a, on a, for a Tales from the Crypt episode. And what I love about this opening with the Crypt Keeper is the mummy that he's sitting there arguing with or having a conversation with is played by William Sadler, who played Breaker in Demon Knight. And he was in... Uh, a Tales from the Crypt episode. Um, so that's that's cool, and he's awesome in that small little role. And so is the Crypt Keeper. It's a cool little opening. And we then we were introduced to Catherine and Caleb, and they live together, their brother and sister. And they have an argument, and Caleb leaves and goes to a bar with his friends. And they end up getting talked into going to this whorehouse by this weird dude, and um, they end up going, him and his one friend, to this mortuary. And how you get to the whorehouse is you go down this ramp in a coffin and you pop out on the other side it looks like you're gonna get burned but you don't you go through it on this um like this track and you end up in this underground place and it's like all there's a bar there and there's sofas and there's all these women half naked and they end up the one friend ends up getting killed by the vampires and Corey feldman well we don't see what happens to him yet and Catherine's worried we find out that she works for this preacher Reverend Current, who's played by the great Chris Sarandon, who's fantastic. You can tell he's having a blast. At least I imagine he's having a blast. It looks like he's having fun. And she's starting to worry about her brother. He hasn't been home. So she goes to the police station, and this is where we're introduced 21 minutes into the movie, Dennis Miller's character, Rafe Gutman. And the cops kind of blow her off, and he tells her that he's a private detective, and he'll help her find her brother. And 
she's repulsed by it because he he kind of works out of this movie theater that's where his office is and she finds this porn poster that used to be played at this theater and she's kind of repulsed by this guy because she's very religious but he talks her, she and he talks her into letting him help her so she, he starts investigating he's actually a pretty competent private eye and i like this miller in this movie i know it got a lot of shit because of him but i think and I know they had problems on set with Dennis Miller at the time. Sometimes he wouldn't show up. He would improvise a lot and go against the script, which threw all the actors off. But I think that's what makes him so fun. I think he's hilarious in this film. And as we make our way, skipping over some things, he discovers that the whorehouse is a bunch of vampires. And it's run by this head vampire, Lilith. And nobody believes him at first, but finally, we have a scene that's pretty cool, like I did for my intro with the, the water gun, where him, he shows up at the... Uh, mortuary and the reverend's there too and he's he wants to put an end to this so they end up going down into where the the bordello is and using holy water and squirt guns they take out all these vampires in gruesome ways and then eventually we have our final confrontation at the church with lilith catherine and rafe and they end up killing the vampire and then we get our surprise ending because it is tales from the crypt so you got to have a little bit of a twist ending where Catherine in the, was taken hostage for a little bit at the bordello and no we didn't see this on camera but she got bit by Lilith so at the end of the film when I think it's over and she's telling Rafe that she's in love with him and she ends up biting his neck we find out she's a vampire then we cut to our final sequence with the Crypt Keeper and that's Bordello of Blood. This film is a lot of fun it's grown on me over the years I think it's actually a very fun vampire movie yes it's cheesy it's corny as hell and some of the effects the makeup effects are really good but they use some CGI and it looks terrible. And the direction, the directing's okay. Gilbert Adler does an okay job keeping the. It's fast paced. It's only an hour and twenty seven minutes, so it never lags. It's it's funny. It's energetic. There's it's gory as hell. All the actors do pretty good. I think Dennis Miller is good. Erica, Erica Laniac's okay. I mean, she's never the best actress. Um, Angie Everhart does fine in one of her first big major film roles. Corey Feldman's Corey Feldman. He's decent in the film. Um, all the actors do fine. Chris Rand is fantastic. I mean, I could watch that man. That I man's hilarious in this film. Just his performance, you can tell he's having a blast. So, I mean, is this movie as good as Demon Knight? No, it's not. It's definitely a step down, but it's still a hell of a fun film. So I would give Bordello of Blood a 7 out of 10. Yes, there are some drawbacks. I think the story is lacking. Some of the effects don't work so well, especially the special of some of the digital effects. But overall, I always found this to be a really fun movie, and I watch it about once a year. And uh, it's a movie that's grown on me over time. So yes, 7 out of 10 for Bordello of Blood. What are your thoughts on the second installment in the Tales from the Crypt movie franchise? Unfortunately, it didn't move on from there. I think it would have been awesome to get a movie every two years from the Tales from the Crypt franchise. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Hit the thumbs up. Share this video. I greatly appreciate it. Subscribe as well. And I'll be back soon with another review. I'll be going to do Demon Knight next. And then I think I'm going to cap the week off with Salem's Lot, the 1979 TV miniseries. So y'all take care of yourselves out there. I'll be back soon. Thanks. Bye.